Hi guys. So today the topic is C++ compiler. So today we are going to look what are all the steps involved in compiling a C++ program and how the program gets compiled and it will be running. So usually we will say like uh, we are we are using like a C++ program we are using a G++ compiler which compiles our C++ program and it generates output. So let's talk a bit about like how the compilation happens and what are all the steps involved in compiling a program. So let's talk about that one. So here you can see in my folder I have two two files. One is text test.cpp and another one is info.txt. So you can ignore for as of now about this info.txt. So let's open the test.cpp. Here I have a simple program so which prints hello world onto the console. So let's compile that one. So before compiling any program, we need to install a G++ compiler. So in my case, this G++ compiler is already installed. And if, here if you see which G++, it says it's installed in user bin G++. If you haven't installed a G++ compiler, what you have to do is sudo apt install G++. If you execute this command, so it automatically the G++ is gonna ex, uh, install from the Ubuntu repository and it will automatically get installed in your system. So now let's talk about compilation. So how can we compile our program? So it's very easy. You take a G++ compiler and you give your input test.cpp and hit enter. So here you can see it generated an output called a.out. So which is nothing but an executable in Linux. So by default, the G++ will generate an output which is named as a.out. If you want to change the name, what actually you have to give is minus O option. So here you can give like a.exe or whatever it may be. So in Linux, there is no concept called .exe. So everything is a file. Only if it is having executable permission, it is an executable file. That's it. So let's remove this a.exe as of now and let's say a.out so let's execute this one and hit enter so here you can see it prints an hello world so now what is happening behind the scene so let's go to my info text so what actually we are giving here we have an uh, program that is a test.cpp and we are giving into g++ that is a compiler and it generated an output called a.out which is nothing but an executable executable so by by the thing like as if we see there are only like some small steps are involved so we are giving a c++ and the output is a .out. so what is happening behind the scene so there are like around four steps which is involved in compiling a c++ program so the first thing is like you take this cpp and it is pre-processed pre-processed next after pre-processing it generated a file called intermediate file so then this intermediate file is again go into another step that is nothing but a proper or which is nothing but a compiler or compilation so as of now you ignore this naming compilation so you will get compile uh, you will get confused like what is this one whether it's compilation means just like we are giving an input and we are taking the outputs this is nothing but this is also we are telling as a compilation so that's why let's consider it as a proper so first thing is like the test.cpp is converted into test.ii so that is nothing but pre-processing pre-processing stage then we are giving this intermediate file to a proper so this is nothing but a g++ proper so then it generates an output called s so this is nothing but an assembly code then this is this assembly code is given to an input is given as an input to an assembler and the assembler will generate an output called object file then this object file is given to an linker and which generate an program called a .out. So these are all the steps which is involved in compiling a C++ program. So even like even C, C program or compilation of C program or C++ program, I'll be keep on uh, like exchanging these kind of these terms like uh, it's a C or C++ compilation. You can consider whatever it may be. 
so now in the pre-processing stage what is happening is so before like to know like what is happening in the pre-processor let's see like what are all the contents of this file so in order to generate these files you need to give a command g plus plus minus save minus temps hyphen hyphen save hyphen temps so then you give your program test.cpp and it hit enter so now here you can see all these intermediate files the object file the assembly code everything is getting generated so let's see one by one so let's open this test.cpp so this is our c++ program so then this c++ program we pre-processed the compiler has pre-processed this one in pre-processing stage what happens is here we have an include file so it opens this include file and it copy paste the content of the include file into this source code so that is what the compilation pre-processing does so let's open the test.ii so this is nothing but an intermediate file here you can see this entire thing is a content of hash include io stream so let's scroll down and here you can see our program starts from here so there are like uh, what is this 28624 lines which is coming from including io streams those are all directly it is copy pasted from include file so this is what our small programs which is coming at the bottom so this is what the compilation preprocessor do apart from this one even it also expand hash define so what does it mean like let's say hash define my name so let's say Bhavit. so here I will say my name and here let's give colon so let's again compile this program and let's take an output let's see the output it's saying hello word Bhavit so let's see our again uh, the intermediate file here let's reload this one and uh, scroll down to the end of the file and here you can see Bhavit so what actually it does is like uh, it take this my name and actually it replaced with the content so that is nothing but Bhavit so in the compilation pre-processing stage it replaces this hash include and it also replaces this hash define and there is one more thing called hash if one so here if we can do hash define or like here you can do some program like int a or something or hash if like end if so this is nothing but a conditional pre-processing so here based on this one these are all getting expanded whenever you compile a c program or like uh, let's the c and c program both are both the compilation steps are same like i'll be using interchangeably with the c and c plus plus so now the test.ii which is an intermediate file which is generated so the next step is like this is given as an input to a proper so the proper is nothing but a compilation so it take this input and check whether all these executables like whatever the syntax we are written everything is proper or not that is what it does so let's let's do a small change let's say before that one let's remove all this uh, let's say test.ii test.o and test.s ls okay and now here let's make a small syntax error let's remove the semicolon again let's compile this now we'll see here it is saying the compilation error so what it is saying is expected colon before the return so we had made in some syntax error and we'll see what are all the intermediate files which is generated here you can see the file the intermediate file it's it's automatically generated and here if we go down here you can see the semicolon is missed and the next thing is it takes this input and generated an assembly so while generating an assembly code it failed because there is a syntax error so that is what like the compilation proper do so what the compilation proper do it checks for the syntax
so it check for the syntax and if everything is fine it generate an assembly code <coughs> okay so let's fix this one let's go to my c plus plus let's fix this again we'll do compilation so now everything works fine now let's go here and we'll see it generated an assembly code so this is nothing but an assembly program which is written automatically from the compiler for this architecture what is mean by this architecture so let's say uname minus a this is my architecture i am running an intel uh, processor so that is nothing but an x86 architecture so basically you have learned in your engineering uh, subjects like 8051 you are wrote an assembly level programming language so that is what actually it does if it is a arm processor then the assembly code for the arm processor it will be written here so basically it returns an operator it returns an assembly program for each of the whatever the processor which you are running or whatever the compiler which you are using so the compiler for me is uh, basically for x86 architecture so that's why it has generated an output called output for the x86 architecture and here you can see main so this is my main function and here you can see that as defined Babit is present and this is the function which goes inside and all these things are the <laughs> output the C out whatever we are doing and the next stage is this dot s file is given to an assembler so which convert this assembly level program into an object file so let's see what is the content of this object file let's open this file so here you can see we cannot read this one because it's a binary file which is an executable file here you can see on the start of the line elf that means executable and linkable format so that means this can be executable and linkable so that means it is ready for linking so like uh, now after this executable this object file is generated next this object file is given to a linker so the linker will generate an output so what does the linker does so linker basically what it does is here we are using c out and this endl this c out function which is already present the declaration we is present in io stream but this is somewhere like someone has written a code right so that is nothing but it is coming from the lib uh, glibc so that is nothing but uh, the library which is uh, responsible of printing a c out so that library this symbol it will search in that library and it automatically links to my executable and it has generated an output called a dot out let's open this a dot out i think like it's it's not opening because like it's uh, i cannot open this one but we can see what actually inside this one tail a dot out Uh, yeah here let's say cat a dot out so here it we cannot read this one basically this is also an executable and linkable format yeah here it is already open here you can see there is a text called elf that means it is an executable and linkable format this a dot out sorry let's go here yeah here you can see this is an elf file that means this can be executable this can be executed so these are all the steps which is involved in compilation steps so at last like whenever you are giving a program to an compiler so it compiles and creates an a dot out during a compilation step it keep on creates all this file these are all the steps which is involved and whatever i had shown here right so this entire steps you can do it manually what does it mean so let's let's have a look on that one so let's remove uh, test.ii test.object test.s and test.o test not test.o a.o so we have only test.cpp so let's do g++ we say minus e test.cpp which means only do pre-processing and generate an output 
So when I hit the enter, it generates an output on the console. So let's see that one. Here you can see it generated an output on console. So either you can redirect this one to II. So whenever I go here and see that is what actually earlier the G++ compiler has generated. Now just we stopped there. So if you do ls, there is only an intermediate file called II. So let's remove that one. Test.ii. Now let's see how can we generate an assembly code. So that can be generated using minus s flag. Hit enter. Then you can see there is something called test.i. Test.s. So let's open that one. Here you can see reload. Here you can see the assembly code is automatically written from the G compiler. Now let's remove that one as well test.s let's stop at creating an object file test.cpp the flag which i am using is minus c so let's hit enter so here you can see the object file is generated so let's go there and see so not double click on this one sorry it's not opening let's double click yeah here you can see it is generated now so this is nothing but an object file so basically you can keep on like uh, do like wherever wherever you want you can stop the execution and you can analyze so why is this useful because like whenever you are writing a big make file you don't want to generate like you don't want to directly generate a dot out so like um, test dot cpp so it generate directly directly the output what happens if you have two or three source code and uh, let's like uh, you are compiling both the source code and it directly generating a dot out and again you do some modification in only one file and again you try to recompile it generate a dot out at the time again the two files are compiling together so to avoid that one let's say like for first file generate an object and keep it and for second file you generate an object and keep it next time you no need to do all this uh, pre-processing stage and assembly stage directly you can take this input and you can link so just give to the linker and it will generate an output so that is what it is so now let's remove test.o so remove a dot out so this is all about the scene which is happening behind so close without saying let's save so we are giving test.cpp pre-processing stage proper stage assembly stage linker stage and at last it is generated an output and we could able to see the output yeah friends this is what happened behind the scene while during compilation stage so if you like the video please subscribe and share thank you very much